Since the 1930s, in time of national or major local emergency, warning of impending catastrophe has been available via communication networks provided and maintained to a high degree of readiness by British telecommunications. The present system, which was installed in the 1960s, is now to be replaced by a modern network that will take advantage of the latest developments in telecommunication technology. From mid-1982, the existing network will be changed over a three-year period to two separate systems of circuits and equipment, devised to meet Home Office requirements and the operational needs of the United Kingdom Warning and Monitoring Organization. The Handle Network, or WB1800, is a special unidirectional system which connects the Air Defense Operations Centers to 250 major police stations throughout the United Kingdom. The Air Attack Warning Network, or WB1400, enables these same police stations, or carrier control points as they are known, to activate some 7,000 power-operated sirens installed at strategic locations in urban parts of the country, and to broadcast attack and fallout warning messages to approximately 20,000 warning points in rural areas. Police, fire and coast guard stations, civil and military establishments, centers of local communication, industrial centers, and monitoring posts manned by the Royal Observer Corps. Flood warning systems are scaled down versions of the air attack warning system and exist in London, Essex, Kent and Lancashire and are being considered for some other areas. They are kept in a state of instant readiness to activate power-operated sirens at specially selected sites when there is a danger of flooding from high tides. Emergency. Emergency. Air attack. At one of the air defense operation centers, the time has come to activate handle. key is turned, a button pressed, and a sequence of signals known as P and Q tones are transmitted to control point exchanges via a national broadcast network. Passing along dual paths, operation is wholly dependent on the signals being correct in frequency and time duration. False operation is therefore virtually impossible. A further set of audio tones operate equipment at the carrier control exchanges which transmit an alerting signal along dual paths to the carrier control points. In police stations around the country, buzzers sound and red alarm lamps flash until one of the two telephone receivers is answered. National attack warning red. National attack warning red. National attack warning red. At Swindon Police Station, the air attack message is received. The third, black telephone, supplies a direct link to the UK Warning and Monitoring Organization. All CCPs have two sets of equipment. One in the control room, the other in a basement or similar secure position, ready to be connected should the need arise. The air attack warning network now comes into operation by selective operation of switches, speech receivers are alerted and sirens sounded. The speech receiver is made up of a receiver and a loudspeaker. The set is normally left switched off. But the operator at this civic center, one of 85 warning points in the area, has been contacted earlier and has placed the set in standby to await a broadcast. Attack warning red. Attack warning red. Attack warning red. Sirens, as a safeguard against false operation, must be primed by a sequence of tones of closely defined frequency and duration periods, known as G tones. They then receive their activating tone sequence, known as S tones. 
The length of these determines the audio sound emitted. Four seconds on and four off, repeated eight times for air attack. A 60 second continuous tone for all clear. And 32 seconds on, 16 off, repeated six times for flood. In the event of a major emergency, sirens can be sounded and warning messages broadcast within seconds of handle being activated. Both systems utilize existing national telephone networks for transmission. And to ensure a maximum state of readiness and reliability of operation, many special features have been designed into the systems. All equipment and circuits on the handle network are continually automatically checked by exchanges of audio signals over duplicated paths. Dual path working throughout also ensures that whatever problems are encountered, one connection between the air defense operation centers and police stations will always be available. Carrier control points have two power sources, a duplicated mains power supply and a thousand hour standby battery. The lines to both speech and siren receivers are automatically tested every six hours. And the siren receivers themselves are automatically tested from the CCP every six hours. Speech receivers are powered from an internal rechargeable battery, which is charged from the telephone exchange via host telephone line or private wire. All operations require correct reception of controlled tone sequences to activate. If any of the safeguards do not function correctly, alarms are activated in the exchange and serious faults corrected as an emergency. In addition to the constant self-checking features, surveillance is made by British Telecom and the police carrying out broadcast and receiver tests at set intervals. On handle, quarterly tests include a spoken message and code word which has to be recorded at each CCP. British Telecom testing from Leeds. On the air attack warning Bishop network, Swindon six monthly tests include a spoken message broadcast from each CCP. This is the Swindon carrier control point making a routine test broadcast. This is the Swindon carrier control point. And monthly checks on speech receivers ensure the monitor tick is audible. On the flood warning system, Occasional live tests of the sirens ensure they are in working order. British Telecom has, jointly with the police authorities and the UK Warning and Monitoring Organisation, an obligation to ensure the warning systems are kept at a high degree of readiness. Obviously, close cooperation is required from all the parties involved. But the need is further heightened by the fact that carrier control areas do not coincide with either police authority or British Telecom area boundaries. British Telecom regional liaison officers coordinate area activity. And the assistant executive engineer covering the exchange serving the CCP is responsible for the oversight of the performance of the carrier control area. However, each police authority appoints a warning officer who is responsible for the operational efficiency of all the CCPs within his jurisdiction. And additionally, collates the results of all tests and advises British Telecom of all faults. The ultimate responsibility for the systems rests with British Telecom headquarters. Although it is a mammoth task to replace all existing equipment, at no time during the changeover will any part of the system be out of service for more than a single period of five days. At a capital cost of 20 million pounds, paid for by the Home Office through the UK Warning and Monitoring Organization, the network will provide an annual income of 36,000 pounds from the handle network and 4,000 pounds from each of the 250 carrier control areas. The modern warning systems are a complex network, 
incorporating every possible fail-safe device. So that in the extreme operating conditions that could occur in a major emergency, vital communication would not be lost. Working together, we can ensure that should that event ever arise, the very best use can be made of British Telecom's wire broadcast warning systems.